Academe. Um, so first, let me just say that my name is Mary Lewis and I'm a historian. I teach in the history department at uh, Harvard, of course, and I also have my office at CES, although right now I'm in my attic. And um, it's great to see so many people. Um, this was generated in part because I was helping one of you and I thought, well, if I can help one of you, I could probably help a bunch of you. Um, so thank you. Okay, so I wanted to start, I'm not going to follow the um, handout uh, word for word, um, but it kind of will reprise what I'm talking about. And I wanted to start start with Hollis, um, even though most of you are very familiar with Hollis and have already used it many times, um, there are some secrets in Hollis that you might not be aware about, um, aware of. So I just wanted to kind of start there and just go over some really simple things about Hollis before we launch into some other, um, uh, you know, remote, um, other forms of online um, research tools. And keep in mind that None of these are um, exhaustive, okay? I'm just trying to give you a few tools for how you can do this sort of thing, um, but it's certainly not the only way to do it. Um, okay, so the first thing that you probably already know is that you should sign in, um, and that just allows you to have access to more of the things that Hollis has to offer in terms of like, ebooks and so forth. Um, often, if there are online things they, and you haven't logged in, um, it will ask you to log in when you try and access the ebook anyway. Um, but it also can give you sort of a better searching capability too. So that's just something to know. Now, most of us um, might uh, have a topic, but we don't necessarily know what the Library of Congress um, subject headings are. So does someone want to quickly unmute themselves and throw out what their topic is real quick? I can say mine if that would work. Um, so I'm studying uh, popular culture in Northern Ireland um, okay. over the last couple of decades. Okay, so let's do, this is probably not gonna be, whoops, Northern Ireland popular culture, this is just a keyword search, right? Um, and that's probably, that may be too specific, I don't know, but okay, so for instance, there's this book, um, and it's not online, so that doesn't help us right now in this moment, but, but I just want to go over the principles with you, and then we can get to how to do the stuff that have online access. So this is interesting. The subject headings for this particular book are very narrow, right? Um, so you could click if, if you know, uh, you were actually interested in this particular sub subject, then you could click on it and maybe get more um, sources that, um, and that's not just going to be Ireland, right? That's going to be all over the place. Um, so you could do that. Um, but that may be too narrow. Uh, so you may have to try and um, play around with different different headings. So maybe you just want to do Northern Ireland as a subject heading. Um, or if you have a favorite book about this subject. Um, let's just look at this for a moment. This is a journal. But there should be Actually, journals don't give us subject headings. My, my bad. Sorry about that. Um, okay, let's say we're looking for this one. So there are other, you know, this narrows it down. Northern Ireland history. You could click on that and get other Northern Ireland histories. Um, and you can, um, once it, my internet is, operating rather slowly, and I'm sorry about that. Once you get that, you could also add other elements to it. So you could change this, for instance, to sources and see if that, you know, narrows it down. Like you only want primary sources, for instance. So, and I'm sorry this is operating so um, all right, so then you get things, sources for local history, so forth. Now, okay, 
as you can see, most of these are not available online. So the trick here is to click this, and then you can get the things that are online, okay? So that's just really basic. Now let's say you were interested, let's go back to the original Hollis, and let's say you weren't sure if it were, if you wanted to look up, you know, um, Ireland or I, well, no, let's see. Um, let's, let's say I'm just going to pick something from my own research off the top of my head. Let's say I wanted to look up something about the Atlantic slave trade, but I wasn't sure if I wanted it to be slave, slavery or slaves or slave. I can put an asterisk next to it and I can get anything that starts with slave, but ends, however, slavery, slaves, slave trade, etc. So let's just see what that does. Okay, so you see it's Atlantic slave trade, but there might also be Atlantic slavery, etc. So if you're in a situation where you're not getting enough hits, you might want to play around with the asterisk because it allows you to um, widen the terms that Hollis will search for. So that's a sort of trick of the trade. Now, once you get um, your subject heading, um, I'm trying to think what we're, someone want to throw out a, just another topic real quick? Healthcare and migration. Sorry, what in migration? Healthcare and migration. Healthcare and migration, okay. Um, so let's try the asterisks there and migration, or we can just do migration because it will assume an and if you don't tell it. Um, okay, so um, now uh, this could be um, anywhere, right? And so what we might want to do in your case is narrow it down by language, for instance, if, uh, we'll just go see, see if they have Italian. Yes. Um, interesting that it's not all in Italian. <laughs> and if there's French, okay. Uh, it's only as good, always remember that every database is only as good as the people who put the material into it in the first place. So, but this might be interesting for you, right? Um, and it's available online. So then your next task would be to click online to get those things, right? Or, or you might find this book, um, and I don't even know if this is, this is uh, what you're interested in, but, and here are a bunch of topics, okay? So maybe healthcare isn't the only topic that is gonna grab some of the stuff that you're interested in. Maybe social services or services, um, welfare. I mean, you gotta play around with these things, okay? So that's just my quick review of Paulus. And I'll let you guys answer questions, ask questions at the very end because I don't wanna take up too much time. The other thing I wanna alert you to is the shelf view. So this is like, you know, virtual, being in Widener, being able to scan the shelves and getting that serendipitous book that is next to the one that you were actually looking for. Um, so interestingly, this particular book is filed with a, no, books that aren't all on Italy, but are about maternal health, it looks like. So you can decide, oh, okay, well, I'm interested in this one about Il, il Bambino, um, and so I'm going to look up that instead. Um, or you can go back up here, change your, you know, pick one of these search terms instead, or maybe immigrants, maybe migration wasn't the best term. Maybe we want immigrants dash dash healthcare, um, or immigrants dash dash social welfare, something like that. I'm not sure even social welfare is a Library of Congress um, subject heading, but you could, you could still put it in the keyword um, search and see what that gets you. Okay, um, the next thing I wanna show you about Hollis is more specific to 
like that's useful for your entire Harvard career and onward, <laughs> um, but um, maybe not specific to the moment that we're living in where you can only look at things online. So the thing I wanted to alert you to are the databases. So you still go, you start with Hollis, you click on databases, and you plug something in. So um, I had put in an example on the handout I put in queer because somebody was working on that. I don't know if that person actually showed up today. Um, but, and here is this database that if you play around and sometimes it's imperfect, you don't know which link to click, you will eventually get, and all of them are different, so they're only a good, as good as the people who created them, right? Okay, and then you have this uh, database that you can search for um, material about sexuality and gender um, generally. So the person is the person who was working on um, oh, women in Parliament, I believe it was in the UK present. Yeah, that's me. Okay, so Priscilla, that, that might be, this might be a database, you know, the sexuality part, maybe not so much, but the gender part might be uh, useful to you here. Um, Gale Primary Sources also has a bunch of other, um, let's see if we can get down to Gale Primary Sources just generally. Maybe not, they're not gonna let us do that. Okay, um, there is a way to get to Gale Primary Sources and we will find it, um, uh, that has more general other, other databases that you can um, try using. Um, okay, for now though, um, I need to try and get out of this screen. Okay, there we go. We're gonna go back to Hollis, back to databases. One of the things about Zoom that's a little bit annoying is that up at the top where I need to click things is where the Zoom um, like control board appears and gets in my way. Okay, so back to databases. Um, I listed a bunch that I actually thought might be useful for this particular group. Um, so for instance, Archives Unbound. Um, but you don't need to know, this is for anyone who's working on places where Slavic is, um, Slavic culture, Slavic societies, etc. Okay, um, so anyone who's working on um, most of Eastern Europe, um, this would be the place that you wanna look. Um, and again, it's a Gale primary source. Um, okay. Um, but you could just put in whatever your topic is. You know, you could put in, I don't know, immigration, even if you don't know the title of the database. And you could get, okay, so the person working on immigration, you're not working on immigration in the United States, so that's not going to help you that much. Um, but this one, Immigrations, Migrations, and Refugees, Global Perspectives, which unfortunately ends in 1996, um, still might be useful. So if we looked up, I don't know, Torino, <laughs> you could see I was practicing on here. Um, that's why that came up. You know, there might be, or Turan, you're going to have to play around because maybe, um, so these are going to be um, news articles that appeared, and most of these don't actually look that relevant um, uh, to what um, Francesco's looking at, but you know, just um, because it's so early. But you can do various controls, you can try and um, control for years, so forth and so on, okay? Um, so, and Redex is another sort of conglomerate like Gale that has tons of databases in it. So even if you're not, you know, using it this time around, it's something that you might want to use in the future for your work at Harvard. Um, they've got, you know, African American newspapers. It's unbelievable. It's a very rich database. Um, there are also, I'm having the trouble with the um, thing not wanting to do what I wanted again. Um, sorry, folks. Um, there 
in general for Europe, this is an excellent database um, that has just loads of things on culture, um, politics, you name it. It's basically like a conglomerate of libraries working together, um, uh, mostly about cultural heritage, but not only, and all related to Europe. Um, or at least from European libraries and museums. So it could be on other topics, but mostly related to Europe. So that's another one that you might want to look at. Um, okay, I'm not going to go into a lot more detail with examples other than to show you a couple that are a little tricky to use. Um, so there's the Foreign Broadcast Information Service. So this is pretty cool. This is basically like summaries of radio or television broadcasts that happen in foreign, in foreign countries um, but are summarized for US audience or for policymakers or whatever and again it's a redex thing so you know let's say we were interested in immigration and Italy um, just to use that example again um, this is really okay so clearly we need to like control for the year um, so let's see here huh they don't let me control by year that's okay well we can do reverse cron and that will help us um, okay so this is more recent um, so the French it's a summary of um, a report that was originally on the Madrid ABC, but it's been translated into English. So it will give you, um, and you can, a lot of these you can download as PDF. Um, so that's a really, really, for those of you who are doing, um, you know, topics that um, you're just trying to get a sense of the lie of the land of who's talking about what, that, that might be a, a useful, um, database for you. Um, okay. World newspapers is also a little tricky if I recall. Anyway, you get the idea. There's so much in here. I always tell my students um, um, that uh, you know, their little brother can look up something on Wikipedia, but you have access to all this amazing, um, amazing databases that even students at other colleges do not have access to. Um, for some reason, the world um, newspapers is not coming up, but you can see there's tons of other um, uh, databases with world newspapers in, in them. So I'm not gonna get fixated on the fact that I can't find every database that I mentioned here. Now, I really want to spend a little bit of time on my favorite, which is Hathi, um, because it is a little tricky to use. And this is on your handout. So ordinarily, when you use Hathi, you log in and you say you're from, you're going to have to, in your, if you've never done it before, there's going to be a whole slew of institutions, and you select your institution. And then, um, Let's go back to that Northern Ireland example. Whoops, sorry. It helps if you spell it correctly. Um, I'm trying to find the one that I actually have on the handout for a reason. Let's just see if that gets me where I want to go. Okay, so for instance, when you get into Happy and it says, full view you can click on that and let's say you decide that you want the first 10 pages of this uh you know book you can dog ear them okay be sure you also dog ear the title page and the publication information so you can cite it later uh Okay, so that's 10 pages, and I can go over here and I can say, you know, you could do 20, whatever. You can do the whole book if you want. Um, download 10 pages, and it's going to start doing it. Okay, I'm not going to, like, get into that because that takes time and bandwidth. But 
Um, anyway, so that's really great. You can just download so that you, especially if you have unstable um, internet in whatever country you're in, um, or in the US for that matter, uh, it can help to download. All right, but not everything is the normal Hathi. Hathi did this wonderful thing where they decided to give temporary access to things that they normally don't give access to. This is a COVID-19 temporary pandemic solution to the problem of libraries being closed. And that functions differently. So I just want, because there's a ton of things that are available this way through temporary access, I want to go over this in some detail because it's a little tricky. So you click on the book and um, sometimes it will not come up and you have to actually go to, as I do on the, on the um, handout catalog record, then click on catalog record and get to check out. And then you can check it out, but do you see what's missing over here? You don't get to download the books that are on temporary access because they don't have the same kind of permissions. So that's unfortunate. Um, you can do the um, painful screenshotting, I suppose, but obviously for a whole book, that would be tough. You get this book for one hour and it will automatically renew as long as nobody else is in the queue. Um, so I have never had anyone want the same book as me at the same time, but your mileage may vary. So read it quickly, take notes, maybe do some screenshots, but there are just so many volumes that are available this way and not unfortunately in the normal happy, um, now I just want to show you that one um, issue that comes up sometimes as well, just so that you know all the steps to go through. So I, I um, that one I had on the handout, the invention of folk music. Um, okay, so this is the book. Oh, it's coming up. When I did it the first time around, I had to click on catalog record first then temporary access, then I could check it out. So if that happens to you and you get, you get a record that's supposed to be available on temporary access, but you can't get it, try catalog record and then go to temporary access. Okay. Um, all right, that's Hathi and that is a good thing to be aware of whether there's COVID or not. Now, there are also databases in Hollis that are not called databases, which is pretty strange. Um, let me see if I can get out of some of these windows so that I can get into one of those. Okay. We're going to go back to our regular Hollis. And there are things that um, are kind of fun, like, and sorry, Catherine, you've seen a lot of this before. Um, Alexander Street video. Now, the new way that Hollis works is they send you all kinds of stuff that you don't actually want as the first entries. Um, and that's annoying. But if you um, click on that suggested resource, Sorry, my internet's a little slow. Okay, so let's say I'm interested in a, um, I don't know, um, someone throw a topic out that might involve uh, something that would be on film. Anyone? Nationalism. Oh, good, okay. Let's just see. Okay, so this is um, calling up a lot of US stuff. Um, so we might want to be more specific. And um, the place discussed, Europe. 
That's a lot still, 2045. Um, it's interesting because every database is different. So this one kind of did the asterisk without me asking it to, right? So it's nation and so forth, not just um, nationalism. What's one of the fun things on here is that it actually has historic newsreels. I know that most of you aren't doing history projects, um, but um, there's some very cool old newsreels in here. Um, so you might want to play around. There's also, if you recall from seeing it a minute ago, um, it has subjects that you can browse too. So we can see what some of those are and maybe tick off um, what we're interested in. Um, so maybe, you know, we're interested in, um, you know, the health policy in Italy, um, public health, and maybe we can, you know, click off Italy or something, and maybe there will be a, 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 a something about um, this is Buenos Aires, but um, maybe there'll be a film. Um, for most people, this isn't going to be that useful unless their topic involves popular culture or newsreels. But um, it is kind of a fun database that, for some reason, Hollis doesn't call a database. Um, it's similarly, they do the same thing with World News Reels online. So this one too, again, they're showing us the articles first. Um, Hollis is a beta system that doesn't, you know, necessarily um, follow the way <laughs> we might, the logic we might use. But World News Reels Online, it's the same company. So that Alexander Street video is the bigger company and this is the more specific um, thing. But you can also, um, again, search, you know, let's say we're, let's go back to, you know, maybe there's some stuff from Northern Ireland. I don't know if there would be um, news reels for um, the period as late as, as um, you're working on. Um, because newsreels were kind of a thing before there was television. So probably not. But, you know, maybe there's some old film that you might want to look at there. Okay. Then I also think it's worth keeping in mind that there are wonderful, um, just really basic guides to bibliographies. So um, the Oxford Handbooks for instance, and they're come by a bunch of different names, Oxford Bibliographies, Oxford Histories, Oxford Handbooks. It all just depends on what series they ended up in. And I believe there's one on nationalism. So I'm just gonna cheat and look at that. Yes, I know that at least a couple of you are working on nationalism. Um, there we go. Slow internet, sorry. All right, now what this is not going to get you primary sources, but what it does do is it has a kind of, you know, state of the art at the time it was published, 2013 sort of summary of the state of the field of the history of nationalism. And then if you keep scrolling down, eventually you will come to the sources that this person is using. And you can maybe look up some of them. So if you're at the state of your research where you're just trying to establish your preliminary bibliography, this can be really useful. Who are the, you know, the really big people you know, thinking about the theory and history of nationalism. Um, and then you can um, go from there, see how many of them are available online as an ebook and so forth. Um, I should have mentioned too that, well, let me see if I can think of a book that is definitely an ebook. Um, I'm just gonna pick one that I know, um, even though it's not, pertinent to any of your topics, but I just want to show you what an ebook, I'm sure most of you know how to use ebooks. Um, 
but there are a couple things that I just want to show you and then we'll open up to questions. So if we're in here, um, and this of course has nothing to do with Europe, um, but um, so you can either choose to read this book online and read the whole thing online, okay, from start to finish, or if you know you just want chapter three, you can download it. So a good chunk of the ebooks, now every ebook, depending on this, is ProQuest ebook, there are also other um, sponsors of ebooks. So everyone is going to have a different way of letting you do that. Some of them won't let you download, some of them will, some of them will only have, they'll have the system like Happy where you can only check it out for a few hours, others as long as you want. So just familiarize yourself with the different forms of ebooks. Now, one last thing I want to do before I open it up to questions is to say that there are resources that aren't on Hollis. <laughs> um, not that many, but there are some. So <laughs> I'm just joking. There are plenty that aren't. And you should always be checking out the national libraries in the country that you're interested in. Um, so if you're working on Italy, you want to look at the National Library of Italy, similar for the UK so forth. Um, they may even have for the UK sub, sub libraries for each of the, the component nations. Um, but there is, of course, the British National Library, which is an excellent library. Um, now, this is one that I just wanted to alert everyone to because it is um, about Europe. Um, so you can, you know, look up, um, you know, I'll just pick somebody from my field. And I can do images. I can get all the portraits of Charles de Gaulle I want, but what I find more fun are the cartoons. Um, so it's full of political cartoons pertaining to Europe. If that's really if that's relevant to what you're um, working on, you might have fun. It's really easy to waste an entire day on this site. I'm <laughs> just having fun with the political cartoon. So I, I warn you in advance. So that's this, and it's on the handout, so you don't need to worry about writing anything down. That's this cbcb.eu. Um, um, the the last. You know, I keep saying the last thing, but the last thing I really do want you to be aware of are the library liaisons. Um, so if um, you go to that handout I gave you and um, click on the link. Uh, whoops, sorry. And this is the one time it doesn't recognize that I've already done this before, of course. Okay, so you can go by your undergraduate concentration. Um, so let's say you're doing folklore and mythology, then you would contact Ramona Crawford. If you're doing history and literature, you would contact Steve Coiler and so forth. Um, of course, I bet you Fred Berkstead would be happy to work with a Hist and Lit student as well. He's fabulous. Um, and so on and so forth. Um, they're also, they also have it by, um, think by just by department or by centers okay um, so uh, especially for the grad students here um, for some reason our center isn't on here so we might want to complain about that um, but in any case um, the same people who do the your you know history and so forth um, or sociology would be relevant for um, for anyone in political science, so government, Kathleen Sheehan could answer your questions, um, sociology, again, Kathleen Sheehan. All right, so I'm gonna stop sharing my screen for a moment. And if folks want to um, ask any questions, I think it'd probably be best if we did the raise hand feature. And I'm happy to go back over any of the things that I might have left out. Quiet group. Nobody has a question. <laughs> Anything that you wanted, you wished, oh, I didn't call on you or, 
you know, your topic wasn't the one that I chose when I was searching for things. Because I'm happy to try and find some things. Somebody want to throw out a database that they want to look up or a topic within the database that they want to look up. I have a, a quick question on um, how you would in, um, describe like going about interviews with people or researching interviews, just ways to get um, that kind of information. Um, okay, so that's an excellent question. And I actually don't have a great answer in part because that's not something that I've ever had to do in my own research. I mean, if you're doing interviews, you have to, of course, clear that through um, the um, research board at Harvard generally. Um, so that would be maybe um, I would check with, I would, what field are you in again? Uh, history and literature. History and literature, okay. Um, hmm, because it's not that common that Hiss and Let students have to do interviews. I'm just trying to think of who in the Hiss and Let office could maybe help you with that. Because usually, correct me if I'm wrong, Fussy Lease, but usually you need to get clearance to do something like interviews. Um, and so that's something you want to kind of buy time for. Um, but it, right. what's your question more like, how do you actually contact people? Yeah, I guess because it's remote, it's probably going to be difficult if you're, say, studying something in Italy to try and get um, subjects or, for instance, like political party leaders, so on. Yeah, uh, that would be tricky, I think. Um, and part of the reason that I'm doing this is that I think that, honestly, sometimes people are going to have to slightly alter their topics a little bit. Um, due to COVID. Now, of course, the one thing we can do over phone lines and whatnot is talk to people, but it is harder to establish a rapport and not everybody has the most up-to-date um, um, internet and so forth. But I would, um, I think you need to probably check on uh, the procedures first of all, and then um, maybe talk to somebody either in anthropology or sociology maybe even gov about um, the way that they've gone about securing access to individuals um, because that's something that they're probably more familiar with. You, could also, you, you. could also talk to the librarian who handles those fields, the liaison that I just showed on the screen, because she would have more familiarity with that as well, I think. Fasilis? Hannah, let's be in direct touch. Uh, I have a few ideas to share on uh, policy research and accessing uh, such information. So let's let's take this offline. Okay, that would be great. Idea. Thank you. Okay, thank how you. about um, Francesco has a question? Yes, thank you very much for everything you showed. Uh, my question is brief, and it's what advice do you have for? finding books when it does not look like Holly says any of that because I mean I, I needed a book lately and I just bought my own version uh, but I was just wondering whether you had any advice you know what what last step should I take before I just get an ebook from the iBook store. It's true that the ebooks are more prevalent in the English language um, and on Anglophone topics. Um, so it's true that there will be some that you some topics that aren't going to have just the same number of ebooks available. I would try the Hathi though before you give up entirely, because Hathi has, especially in this temporary access a ton of things that you wouldn't expect it to have. Um, normally it has things either that it has, you know, some kind of um, proprietary relationship with the publisher or that are out of print, but they have in print things now as a temporary COVID measure um, in lots of different languages. So I would start there before I completely um, give up. Um, and uh, see where that gets you. Um, and then, you know, you might also, I don't know if you've already looked at the Europeana um, website, um, but it, uh, it connects to a lot of the other European National Library websites. So some stuff, for instance, for me, I work on France, um, things that 
I might be searching for in the French National Library on their Gallica um, website, I guess I sometimes find more easily on your Europeana, and it might be the same for the Italian um, libraries as well, that you might want to see if Europeana has anything for you. Um, there are a number of of these databases that have Italian language newspapers in them. So that might be something that would be a source for you. Um, it's not a book, but it's certainly a source. Um, so yeah, I would definitely try a few of those things first. Um, play around with the databases and see what you can find. It'll be more like primary sources than secondary. For the secondary, that's really tricky. I mean, I was doing a sophomore tutorial in history this past semester, and that was hard. We had an easier time finding online primary sources than we did secondary. Um, so um, does that hopefully help a little bit? And then um, I'm going to call on the next person and can come back to you if you still have questions. Um, how about Alex? Hi, um, thank you so much. That was really helpful. Um, okay, so my question is, it's not just specific to remote research, but it's something that's become more like a part of my, part of my potential toolkit because of the COPE pandemic. I was wondering about um, how you can find access to like oral histories or collections of oral histories. It's not really a type of source that is really used in my field, but uh, every once in a while I'm reading some history that uh, a history book that will mention like an interesting project that's relevant to my or where people were there was oral history conducted relevant to my time periods and stuff like that and so I was like wondering how to find that um, okay yeah. so there are oral histories in the database section and like with a lot of these things they're often about the US but not only um, so the history makers for instance is purely about african americans it's actually incredible um but that's not relevant to your work um i'm not actually familiar with this one so let me just see what this is um but there are oral history databases um so that might be a first step um that said you know um there are going to be lots of things that are more okay I don't know why it's not letting me in, um, but it's that great Alexander Street again. Um, let's just, this is also not your field, Alex, but just to, I'm just trying to give you an example. Um, so this is America in World War II oral history. So let's say you were really interested in the landing at D-Day, you know, there probably are any number of oral histories about that. Now, the other thing is you might want to think about um, most, most oral histories, however, are not going to be in here, right? Because this is, this is a company that has produced this. Um, and a lot of oral histories are more casual, and that's going to take more sleuthing. Um, there is a, um, uh, I'm trying to think um, how to get to where I want to go here. Um, there is a database called Archive Grid um, that has sources in other libraries beyond Harvard. So, you know, you maybe could see, um, I, I don't know what your, um, I don't even know if, if this will turn up anything. Um, but so again, this is going to be, a lot of these are related to US stuff, but you could pour over this and see if there's oral history pertaining to your topic, or you could narrow it down by actually saying what your topic is. One warning about Archive Grid, don't believe the save feature. It doesn't work and you will lose all your research. The thing you think you can email to yourself at the end does not work. So be like screenshotting or taking good notes with Archive Grid um, because you will be sorely disappointed otherwise. Um, I found that out the hard way. Um, so does that help, Alex? Yes, it does. Thank you so much. Okay, and then, you know, good old Google, believe it or not, for oral history, um, you might, depending on the topic, you might be able to um, find out more. Look at um, who has oral history cited in their works as well, and try maybe even um, work backwards. There's one thing I didn't talk about, which is a general strategy for doing research any, anyway, COVID or no COVID is to work backwards from people's footnotes, seeing where what they cite, trying to get find it. 
Um, Catherine has a question. Yeah, hi. Um, reiterating the thanks for the presentation. Um, I had heard some suggestion of people um, suggesting that we reach out to archivists in other countries um, if we're no longer able to go to those countries to conduct research. Uh, and I was wondering if you had any sort of best practices in emailing those people asking if they could give like scans or some other try to access to archival resources that we can't get through Harvard's network of resources. Right, that's a great question. Um, there are gonna be different, depending on how shut down their library is, there are gonna be different levels of willingness for them to do anything for you. So if you looked at the, um, hold on one second. Um, if you looked at the, I can share my screen, although I'm not really sure that I'm going to find what I'm looking for. <laughs> um, the National Library, National Archives of the United Kingdom, for instance, they have a way of, first of all, they have tons of things online. So, you know, especially those of you with UK topics, Northern Ireland, et cetera, um, you can try and find things that way. They also have a, um, they have a function where you can actually pay them a nominal fee. Um, and I'm trying to find it, pay for research. Um, so, uh, so if you know that if you find, for instance, something in their online collection and you just want a copy of it, they will charge you, this is actually, more than what I'm looking for. There's another one, once you already know what it is, this is way too much money for you folks. There's like an eight pound fee, <laughs> if you know what you're looking for, um, that they will verify that it's there and then for an, another fee, copy it for you. However, last I checked, um, they weren't doing it because they just didn't have the employees, the density of employees. Um, so you can definitely look at every archive website um, and check what their reproduction policies are. Um, I will warn you, depending on the country that you're working on, the rapidity with which people reply to email will vary greatly. Um, and sometimes they won't reply at all. If you feel comfortable speaking the language um, that you are studying, I suggest the telephone. Um, maybe send an email and then if they don't reply, literally just pick up the phone and give them a call. Um, because that's how, frankly, most places in the world, most societies are much less passive aggressive than the United States is. And most societies just function um, that way um, and don't necessarily answer email with the, you know, just rapid fire response that we do um, for whatever reason. I think Americans are, you know, prefer to not be in face to face confrontation except in these horrible events that we've just experienced. Um, and so, you know, for whatever reason, we do everything by email, but most places don't function that way. So, you know, seriously, um, think about calling them. Um, and they usually are thrilled to be able to help people. Now, again, depending on the density of employees they have right now. So it all really depends on that. Have someone in chat. Um, okay, yes. Um, any other, we're about at, I think, the time that we had allotted, if I'm not mistaken, but I'm happy to stay on a couple more minutes if anyone has any further questions. Um, and, you know, also my emails on the handout. I would say that if you have a subject specific question, you should probably reach out to your library liaison. Um, but if you have a question about something that I went over, um, I'm happy to um, to um, go over that with you again, um, or to make an appointment with somebody. Um, so there's a question, do you mind sending the handout again? Laura will certainly send it to everyone again, um, if they missed it. Um, any last questions? And I know this was not exhaustive, but it hopefully gives you the beginning of tools that you can use not only during COVID, but just generally um, for how to kind of, you know, shorten the process of doing research um, via the Harvard libraries. Feel, you know, I would, if I were you, I would also go through the databases that I listed and see if any of them are pertinent to you. Um, 
or just throw in keywords into those into that database search section. There's also one last screen share. Um, there is also um, best databases for, and they will actually tell you topics. So, you know, you could you could try and see, okay, what do they think the best databases for history are? Um, but that doesn't narrow it down to Europe, you know. Um, um, but anyway, so there are things there, they do give you a few suggestions, or you could just put in Europe and see where that gets you. Um, This is a, a really interesting one too that I think I have on there. Um, so intelligence briefs on Europe. Um, okay, any final questions? No, okay. Well, I wish you all the luck. I know this is not the way you were planning. All of you like, you know, wrote these great grant proposals and you had these, you know, imagined things that you were gonna be doing with your summer and um, you totally deserved to be able to be, you know, in an archive or doing an oral history or whatever. Um, and it's just a shame that you're not there, but there are really fun and cool things that you can do remotely. And so hopefully I've turned you on to some of them today. <laughs>